Let's look at these two case studies, Clarksville Light and Water in Clarksville, Arkansas, and Russellville Water and Sewer System in Russellville, Arkansas. These two projects are unique, uh, but in both cases, they needed major upgrades to their existing SCADA system. Um, but also, I think they were unique in that they did set their sights higher than just moving to a good enough solution. Both the districts had a vision for moving to the best, most modern solution that they could that would take them years into the future. Brown Engineers was the systems integrator for both. And Brown Engineers is certified by both inductive automation and bedrock automation. And they played a major role in selecting and implementing ignition and bedrock for these two organizations. So this first project that we want to talk about is at Clarksville. Uh, the screens here uh, show one of the first projects we did was a 30-day window where we had to bring uh, the remote telemetry system into uh, ignition. And it was actually due to ignition that we were able to uh, deliver on that project and won an award. That's what the slide is on the left side of the screen. And from there, we moved into um, the water treatment plant expansion project, which is the ignition screen shown here. Uh, that's a full ignition system with the vision graphics, uh, mobile client with remote access, trending alarms reporting, uh, all built out uh, in ignition. And so uh, that was a great project uh, that we started with back in 2013. So we've been working with Clarksville for a few years with ignition in this process. And that led us to uh, one of the new the next projects that we want to talk about and to understand that a little bit better we have john lester here with us today john's the general manager at clarksville light and water and helped shape the vision for that so john why don't you tell us a little about uh, clarksville clarksville arkansas is on the southern end of the ozark mountains in arkansas it's a community of about ten thousand. a little bit about the utility itself we've really been in existence we're a municipally owned ut utility uh, we've really been in existence for well over 100 years. Uh, in 1947, however, the elected officials saw fit to uh, really kind of create a separate utility commission. So I do not necessarily, and this utility does not necessarily report directly to elected officials. We have uh, appointed commissioners uh, and a separate board. And the whole idea behind that is to provide some autonomy and really focus on uh, running the utility like the business that it is. Uh, however, even with the existing uh, structure, the city council basically has a regulatory oversight in that they uh, assign the board members. If we have any major projects where we have to issue debt, uh, they have to approve that. And they also uh, approve uh, rates or any adjustments we have related to electric water and wastewater rates. And uh, since we are municipally uh, owned, uh, we have uh, not-for-profit rates. It's about adding value to the community more than maximizing profits. After the 30-day challenge that uh, Dee talked about, we started looking more at what our needs were, and uh, we had a substantial amount of needs on our electric side. We're a unified utility. And uh, we really wanted to take some major steps. You know, we were talking about uh, CapEx and, and OpEx. Well, this whole project from the get-go really was unique in that I didn't have a whole lot of uh, legacy systems or specific uh, SCADA type software to have to replace because simply our small utility had nothing in place. And so the, the 30 day challenge that I put D under was really critical in order to demonstrate to our employees that it could be done and it could be done effectively and it could be a really valuable tool for them. So when we got the 30 day challenge done, I think our uh, uh, water superintendents were very pleased with the result. Well, that gave us the opportunity to take some additional leaps forward in that our electric system had no uh, SCADA at all, which is highly unusual for an uh, electric utility. So as I started communicating to the board members what the needs were, we talked about what some of those expenses might be and then how were we going to carry the data. And after much discussion, we opted rather than to use radio systems, uh, we wanted to look at actually building a fiber network. And uh, in 2006, they authorized a substantial amount of uh, capital expenditures. And with that included a uh, 16 plus mile, 288 uh, uh, fiber strand uh, fiber network that we constructed. Typically, uh, based upon utility needs alone, 288 strands is way more than what we would need. However, when you start looking at the economics of uh, constructing such a network, it's not necessarily the cost of the material in the cable, whether it's 12 individual strands or 288 expense-wise, it's the cost of the labor to construct. 
So my board had the vision to go ahead and, and overbuild capacity, think that we could use it in other ways to add value to the community. When we did the construction, it was designed in a way to have maximum reliability and redundancy. It's built with self-healing features. So if there's a storm in a particular a segment that severs a fiber, it'll automatically uh, transport the data around in other ways so it'll heal itself. This project uh, on the utility side, we ultimately connected uh, four substations that we own, plus we are tied to the grid uh, via a substation north of the town. Uh, Southwestern Power Administration is that connection. We connected our office, our operations center, uh, West Water Tower, water treatment plant, and pollution control. Now, even though we built this fiber network, we also understood that we were going to, as we continue to expand the SCADA capabilities and monitoring capabilities, control capabilities. There was no way we wanted to build fiber to every single uh, device that was out there. And for example, it just wouldn't make sense longer term when we did a wastewater project to build fiber to a lift station. Well, there will be wireless applications. And what we've done is the West Water Tower, we've made that kind of a, a, a control point for any wireless communication. So we've really got a combination of both, but the fiber network is going to be pretty powerful for us. That really helps uh, kind of see where you guys have leapfrogged ahead of everyone in terms of your vision for what you're doing. And so you can see from the uh, fiber backbone that we have now, we had an ability to think um, uh, more broadly about the electric utility SCADA system and how that was going to operate with all the facilities that uh, John had described. And so um, one of the things that we had to consider with that was the cybersecurity features, uh, especially being on a large fiber loop that would have a lot of other uh, things connected to it. Uh, as we're also thinking about the design here, you'll see this is typical uh, of three of the substations that have a 15 kV distribution system with the uh, feeder breakers. So we had some legacy devices here that we had to uh, consider how we were going to connect to those and communicate and, and bring the data in from that part of the system. We had some discrete devices that were um, older breakers and things that we needed to connect to. And we also had some new uh, power station meters uh, that would have uh, some data on those. One of the other sites that's not shown here uh, is the grid tie substation outside of the city. That was far enough away we had to connect to uh, the bedrock controller there with Ethernet radios. And that bedrock connect, uh, controller is also uh, talking to an existing GED20 uh, RTU using a DMP3 protocol. So these were some of the things that we were looking at in terms of uh, what we were going to do. Uh, with the SCADA system. And so here are some of the panels we built. Uh, these sub panels had to be retrofitted into existing uh, control panels at the uh, four substations and then also the grid tie station. So that's what those look like. And this is an example of one of the finished products uh, at uh, a station that uh, mostly had discrete inputs only for circuit breaker status at one of the older substations, but a nice clean control panel uh, with the bedrock controller in it. I'll also show you some of the ignition screens related to this. Um, we have one line diagrams for the 169 kV and 69 kV circuits that come into the city and uh, also have uh, some trending and power monitoring system screens uh, that help with managing the daily demand. And we've got some other weather and temperature data coming in to that uh, and also tracking the monthly uh, peak loads there for a kind of a management level dashboard. Uh, this screen I like because it shows one of the substations uh, with the pop-up boxes for uh, some of the existing legacy devices that we had to uh, communicate with and how we were able to grab some of the important data uh, out of those systems. Uh, we also have uh, some other screens that are not shown, but they, uh, they're city maps that show the areas where these distribution feeder circuits uh, are out in the city and they change state, uh, color state when those breakers open or close and those can be used as outage maps to see um, what area is affected when we have change of state. So that's a little bit about the electric SCADA project. Other things that we're thinking about at Clarksville um, with John are the remote telemetry units for both the sewer and the water system using bedrock controls uh, back to ignition. Uh, the sewer plant controls are one of the next things on our uh, target list to take a look at. And then dreaming a little bit about what distributed generation systems may look like with industrial customers and uh, some generators and things that we can use to uh, manage the electric demand throughout uh, the city. So some um, good looking um, future projects there. And I think some of the success factors, part of it is the client having a vision for the future. You heard 
you know, John shared just a little bit of that. It's a great story at Clarksville about what they're doing there and knowing where they want to go with their city. We had a great relationship um, with we've developed through these projects. And I think also bring to bear the right technology uh, ignition being used across um, all three utility departments here has been a great win for them and using bedrock cyber secure controllers um, to give them uh, peace of mind uh, as they move into the future. Can I, can I speak real quick? Dean? Yeah, John. Sure. I mean, as, as we talked about the solution as uh, the integrator for us, what was clear to me related to the ignition software was the fact that we could use it across all platforms and that it was very flexible. We could design it in any way we saw fit and we could add to it. Uh, and I see other, um, I think the, the software is so powerful. I see other potential uses. Uh, you know, we're looking at smart grid technologies and you know, smart meters. And when I talked about the fiber, as I'm seeing the capability of the software, we could potentially let's say we provided uh, broadband services over our fiber network to the community. I could see how we could use that to kind of monitor uh, outage related situations with our fiber. So I, I just, I just see it as a powerful type platform that we can use across lots of different departments. And our original discussion, if you remember, D, was we don't want the Hotel California, no offense, California, in uh, Clarksville, because I don't want to be locked into a certain proprietary system. And Ignition gave us the ability to avoid that. There was kind of a beginning attempt to do that on the water side, and it had not necessarily been successful. And that's why the 30-day challenge was issued to D and that we had to show them it could be done and could be done right. The water treatment plant was, uh, supervisor was very skeptical. And when we pulled it off, I think he was pleased and surprised. In fact, uh, it was in the first 60 days that he really started using the, the volumes and the levels in the tanks to help our distribution crews zero in on where a leak was that would have been hard to find otherwise. So it was already demonstrating uh, some cost savings, both in overtime labor that had to respond and water losses. Now, I kind of like to joke uh, when I give presentations and talk about it, we're automated enough with our water treatment plant that uh, I like to say that uh, the water treatment plant supervisor or manager can completely operate his plant from the, the lazy boy chair while he's watching an NFL game on a, on a Sunday afternoon. And what makes it even more funny is when he hears me say that, his, his initial response is, no, it's not an NFL game. It's from my deer stand in the woods. So uh, it really gives him the ability to, to be very reactive and proactive with his water treatment plant without having to physically be there. And it really has basically eliminated all overtime because of the capability. That's great. Thanks, John. We, we put this slide in here just to see if, if you, John, or do you want to make any comment about your cybersecure electric SCADA controls and the ACEC Arkansas Award? Yeah, this was a nice award that uh, Clarksville and Brown Engineers won just to show off what we've done with cybersecure electric SCADA controls there. And it's just nice to be able to, to see people taking recognition in these with these kind of projects that are being done, um, even in small and medium sized utilities. I mean, this is very elegant, nice stuff, but it's not so complicated that you can't put it anywhere. So that's part of the elegance and the beauty of it. Well, and, and for both the uh, solution for ignition and bedrock, I mean, we're a small utility and we're very sensitive to cost. And I found both applications and solutions relatively affordable based upon what we, what we needed.